Hello and welcome back to another BC cosplay video. This is part two to me trying to build a Batman mask that's custom fitting to my head. If you'd like to have a look at part one, you can hit that uh, button thing in one of the top corners. Here's a little sneak peek of what the mask looks like at the end of this video. You know, by no means am I uh, some, some master at what I'm doing here, showing you my entire process of how, you know, I'm creating my own designs. You'll see me make mistakes, you'll see things not go to plan. And that's just part of my learning process uh, and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes as well. I put a lot of time, a lot of work into this video and I really hope you enjoy it. Take a look around the channel. Without further ado, let's get into part two. Yeah. In part one, I got this far. Here are my two halves of the mask and now I've got to figure out how they're going to join together in the best possible way to fit my head shape. Even though I've used my plaster model as a base to work off, the parts still aren't, you can't, they're not really a perfect fit, shall I say. And I still need to do a bit of fitting and a bit of working around to get them to fit as best as they can. So, when I put the mask on, I'm just looking at my iPad, the reflection of my iPad, just to see what's going on. It's something like that, because this piece is the chin rest, chin strap. And you can see already how there on the side uh, the part is overlapping and really these templates are allowing a lot of excess width so if you want to use the templates that's a good thing because uh, hopefully these things are going to fit more more varied head sizes i'm going to get my two halves oh, come on just tape the two halves together so that i can get that that join there at the front with the nose So guys, very quickly, uh, I've basically made a mistake. I've learned that whenever I'm joining a mask together in two halves, if I want the shape to be symmetrical, I think that you need to join the mask together in two uh, equal halves of equal width. So my strategy in overlapping this over this half isn't working because it's distorting the shape. And as you can see, the ears uh, aren't actually aligning which really sucks. So instead, I'm gonna I'm taking it back, going to starting from here, cut away on each side, equal widths at a time, until I get two halves of equal width that are exactly the same, and then I'll join the seam down the center, and that should hopefully fix my problem that I'm having at the moment uh, with the symmetry and the alignment. up on back so I've done my trimming along the center line there that's glued already the ears still aren't perfect I have to say they're still slightly slanted I don't, I'm not sure myself what's going on with the ears but uh, I will work to get it uh, fixed on, on the positive the side profile is matching up lovely with the ears which is great a zip this is just something that I've just quickly cut off one of my old bags. I want to use a zip now because I won't actually, once this is, say if I glued this seam all the way down, I wouldn't actually physically be able to get the mask back on. I need something like a zip so that I can actually loosen the back off uh, to be able to get it on and off. I'll start the zip like where, where I've stopped gluing, perhaps stop about, about here. So that is the plan. As long as you join two identical halves together, in theory the shape you get should be uh, a symmetrical one. At the moment the ears aren't uh, entirely straight yet. After I've pulled that in with the zip, they are to an extent going to correct themselves. I want to have this as a contrasting uh, bit of area to the rest of the mask. I've got this, which um, is anti-slip mat. And I think that that could look really nice uh, as, a t as, a, as an added texture inside there, just to give the mask a bit more interest. Yep. I measured the width of the actual uh, teeth for the zip to be about six mil. So I cut 
a strip either side off of 3mm so I can create that slit down the back now for the zip to go into. I won't glue it in just yet because I want to do the paper mache first before I put it in. These last two joins are really important, the front and the back. This line at the back and the chin strap. And it's really going to be the deciding factor as to whether you know this helmet is going to fit me really nicely or if it's going to be uh, slightly too loose. So I'm just taking my time, thinking about whether I need to tweak uh, little things to uh, perhaps cut more material off at the back to make it just that bit more tighter. I am just sort of moulding the mask around my face with my hands to see how the join uh, interacts. I can see at the bottom it's getting too tight so I've decided that I'm now going to cut like a small triangle off the bottom to straighten out the join and that's what I'm doing now. Using tracing paper I'm transferring the shape from the one side across to the other side so that I can get an accurate uh, cutaway that should hopefully be identical. Trying the helmet on again, I can now see that the width of the slit all the way down the mask is roughly the same uh, across the whole of the join. I've got my chin strap there now done and attached. Well, what is now left to do? I want to uh, reshape the chin here because I don't want that to be straight. I'm going to put a curve onto that. When I'm getting the helmet on and off, it's still a bit too tight, so I'm going to extend this perhaps by another five centimeters towards the front so that I can have more zip, which means I've got more leverage to bend the mask when I go to put it onto my head. I keep saying it, but hopefully it should then actually be finished and I can paper mash it. Oh yes. I could keep going, but I can sense that the cardboard is getting a bit soggy. The shape um, might start to distort soon. I think my one my one key tip if you paper mache is to not not rush in and start slapping in the PVA glue. Because if you get the cardboard too soggy, you'll sort of just lose the shape in the process, which would be a nightmare. I um, decided to put a brace at the back to keep the two halves tied together. Because at the moment, obviously, I haven't got the zip in place. It feels like the mask has actually sort of shrunk because it feels tight on my head. But I think it's just the fact that it's become more rigid, now it's dry. And it is for sure a tight fit, I must say. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a, like just a little bit of plaster to try and smooth off any of the, the bumps and the ridges that are left because of the cardboard. Like on, on the sides here, I just want to try and smooth off any of those those creases. I'm talking literally a tiny bit of plaster like here and there. If I add more plaster, there's a chance that the mask might get too stiff and it could and I still need that flex um, to prise the two halves apart when I put it onto my head. You definitely need like some sort of uh, banaclava if I was gonna wear this for a long period of time. You'll also see that my hair looks pretty stupid and it's like just spewing out the out the uh, the slit at the back. And that would be fixed if I had to gain like a fabric uh, banaclava. When I put my zip in, if I were to zip it up now, uh, my hair would definitely start getting caught in the zip as I, as I zip it down. So that's another reason why I'd need one. Neaten up the surface with a bit of plaster, sanding with some wire wool or some sandpaper to try and smoothen the surface down, ready for when I go and spray it matte black outside in my garden. Oh yeah. like just a little bit of plaster.
welcome to my garden everyone. My plaster is now dry. I remembered the last time I did plaster I actually had to go sanding it in my bedroom and the amount of dust that came off it just got everywhere. So now I'm doing it outside. Make sure if you're doing what I'm doing, if you're sanding plaster, you do it outside because it's going to uh, produce a lot of dust. In an ideal world I probably should be wearing a mask as well but I don't actually have one. I think I've actually applied the plaster a lot more than I intended I was going to. Uh, yep. There is actually a crack that's appearing here. I don't think I have anything else to say. Got myself some wire wool and I got some sandpaper. I don't have a Dremel or anything like that, so I'm gonna have to go full manual. It's about to get real smooth. <laughs> just done my two quick fixes with the with the hot glue gun for my, for my two cracks but you can see that one on the top is still there I could, because I fixed it but then I, when I put the mask back on it just re-split I should have made that longer so that I hopefully would have reduced the chance of it splitting on, on, on the end there at the end of the slit I've added in like um, a, a cardboard rectangle I've glued that in for just sort of more reinforcement and I've done the same uh, there as well, that rectangle. This is where this came apart when I was plastering. You can see there it started to just chip away on the on the front of the chin strap. But at the moment it's still a bit like... It's still a bit uh, dusty so I'm going to get like a wet cloth and just wipe it down before, before I spray paint. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm now gonna just talk to you a bit about why the mask uh, is, is still unfinished at the end. It obviously hasn't gone uh, to plan. And I've got this crack that's coming down uh, the front here, which is not good. So I wanna make use of the full length of the zip. Starting from the very bottom, and I reckon I can increase that split, that slit by a good like five centimeters further to the front. Which should, which should allow me even even more a tolerance to put the mask on and off. As I've said in the video, it is a very, very tight fit on my head. The other thing that I wanna do in a part in a part three updated video is, is see to the surface uh, of the mask because I'm still not happy with it. You could say that, you know, you know, oh yeah, this is a this is a battle worn Batman mask. I want to treat this first layer of black now as sort of like a priming coat and I'm gonna sand it back. I haven't really done uh, a, that good of a job in creating a smooth surface. It's still very bumpy and very uh, marked. And then I will, of course, respray it again to hopefully achieve a better finish. These rubber inserts are just taped in at the moment. I just wanted to show you what they look like. I can take those out, obviously, when I come to paint again. Yeah, I think that's all, guys. Again, thank you for watching. There will be a part three coming at some point where I shall make the improvements that I've just said. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.